What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing a beer from the Al Smith Brewing Company, and they're out of San Diego, California, and this is their barrel-aged Speedway Stout, the Vietnamese Coffee with Vanilla Edition. So they are calling this one an Imperial Stout, aged in rye whiskey and bourbon barrels with Vietnamese coffee and double Tahitian and Madagascar vanilla, Comes in at 13.65% alcohol by volume. No IBUs less than time of review. This can is just over three and a half months old. I want to give a huge thanks. Shout out once again to a very good friend of mine and viewer of the channel, Sierra Hotel, for this beer. So huge thanks to him. He actually sent me a mixed four pack of hyped hazy beers. I want to say it was a couple months ago. I reviewed all those beers, but he also included one other beer, and it was this. And I was super surprised because I had no idea, and I was just like, man. It's been a while since I have had a barrel aged Speedway Stout. I think earlier this year I reviewed one with uh, the FLX boys, Dan and Mike. But I we used to get Al Smith stuff here in the Buffalo, New York area. We used to get their regular Speedway Stout. We never really saw any of the variants uh, except for on draft. And I had a couple on draft. And um, yeah, I just love the series. Speedway Stout is a fucking classic classic Imperial Coffee Stout. So when I saw this, I was really pumped up. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to get in this one. So huge thanks to Sierra Hotel. Thank you very much, good sir. I hope this is delicious. Now I just reviewed uh, the Vietnamese inspired Imperial uh, Porter from Boulevard, absolutely delicious. I've never had Vietnamese coffee before. So, oh my God, it's pouring out like fucking motor oil. That's like uh, Hershey syrup. Try to get a decent head on this, but holy Christ, like that. Okay, there's not many things that can make the the beer patrol shut up. There's not many things. That taste made me shut the fuck up. Beautiful looking beer, pitch black. Pitch black when I poured it, pitch black in the glass. Hold up to light, yeah, there's nothing getting through that. Has about a half finger, had about a full finger, half finger of a dark brown uh, colored head. Looked pretty creamy. Alcohol sheets, because those aren't legs. I don't know if it's going to come off on camera. Sometimes it does, but like there are just like, as I swirled it, there's just sheets of alcohol legs everywhere. Holy fuck. Okay, nose. Dude, what the fuck? Fudge. It's fudgy. It's a vanilla fudge. There's definite coffee too, but like a sweeter like coffee. The, uh, the barrels are there. There's this peppery kind of bourbon but it's just a rye spice too because of the rye uh whiskey mounds of fudge sweet milk chocolate caramel toffee brown sugar brownie batter oh brownie batter for sure holy shit okay listen rain it in yosef rain it the fuck in because you're getting a little bit too excited right now because based on that little you know, just slight swipe of the can that dripped down and the nose, I am psyching myself up. And a lot of times when I do that, it's like, yeah, no, you settle down. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's like, it's like if, if I've never had it, I wish it I probably does exist. But like, if you had like a bourbon, like a bourbon, like sauce or a bourbon, like kind of like frosting on a brownie. That's what this is. Like a rye whiskey slash bourbon frosting on a brownie. Oh my God, it smells so fucking good. There's almost like a chocolate chip edge, like a like a dark chocolate chip. Yo, I don't bullshit you. Go to the Beer Patrol, I try to be honest with you. This is one of the best aromas of 2023. And uh, just let's hope the taste is just as immaculate. Cheers, everybody. Thanks again to Sierra Hotel. This is fucking phenomenal. Oh, my God. And I, I want to put words in your mouth, Sierra Hotel. I think he enjoyed this one, which is why he sent it. But I don't remember him saying, like, this was, like, you know, top tier for him. He's been really getting... Sierra Hotels went from zero to 100 real quick. Like... 
he's really gotten into like a lot of the hype stuff, but just like trying a bunch of stuff. And he's now like in, in stout mode and uh, was it pulpit rock out of, um, where the hell are they out of? Iowa, maybe? He's been going nuts about their body and mouth. Oh my God, their body and mouth feels. And he's been torturing me. I'm like, I'm probably not going to get to try any of their stuff because, you know, hard to get. Um, but I don't know. I, I you know, I've, I've been drinking some big barrel aged beers this year. And they've been, this is fucking outstanding. I don't even want to talk about it. I just want to drink it. Anyway, let's go body and mouth feel. All right, so despite the fact that I was talking about fudgy, you know, fudge and brownie batter stuff, it's not as thick as I thought it was going to be. Okay, it's not as thick as I thought it was going to be. It's still pretty thick. Um, it's like, you know, lower side of full, medium full. It's not like over the top. Um, and after having that Weldworks uh, old uh, old rip Medio Noche that was kind of like heavily fruited sour in terms of the, like the uh, the body of that, I, in my mind, I kind of compare stuff to that, and this is not that, but it's still, it's nice for what it is. It's not great. The body on this is nice. It's mild to moderately carbonated, smack dab in the middle. It has a smoothness to it. It's not super creamy or anything. So body and mouthfeel are good. They're not great. So that's going to stop this from being like, you know, a five out of five or anything crazy like that. But the flavors on here are just, man, it's so fucking good. There's a lot, like, first thing that hits me is all the malt goodness. There's, again, brownie batter, fudge, uh, sweet dark chocolate. There is caramel and toffee and just a lot of caramelized sugars in addition to the actual chocolate that, that I'm mentioning. There's a nice roasted kind of malt character. As it continues through the palate, though, the vanilla hits. And I couldn't tell you the difference between, between a Tahitian and Madagascar vanilla, but there's a nice complex vanilla note. Yeah, it's really nice, like right smack dab in the middle of the palate. Then the barrel hits like closer to the finish. It's here's here's what's stopping me from like going absolutely ape shit, like in terms of rating when I rate it. Because this is quite tasty, but I need to rein it in a little bit from like three or four minutes ago because that first initial sip was like, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, you guys out there, but if you've ever had taken a couple sips of a beer. And you're just like, this is fucking great. One of the best beers I've had or, you know, one of the best beers I've had recently, whatever the case may be. And then you continue to drink on it and, and, and the flaws start showing up and you start going, okay, maybe I need to just temper my expectations as I finish the glass. That's what's happening right here. So maybe I need to rein in that first, uh, you know, you know, three or four minutes of me tasting this. It's still really fucking tasty. But as I'm tasting it, a couple things are sticking out. Number one, the barrel, I, it's not as prevalent as I thought it was going to be. There's a little bit of that rye spiciness, a little bit of that peppery bourbon on the on the finish, but it's not, I kind of wanted, that bourbon frosted, you know, brownie in the nose is kind of what I want in the taste. I'm not getting that as much, a little bit disappointing. The vanilla is a little bit more pronounced, and dare I say maybe the vanilla is a little bit heavy handed, and I like vanilla, but it's definitely, you know, punching me right in the throat uh, with all of the um, the vanilla intensity. The finish, excuse me, finish of this one, it's sweet. This is definitely a dessert beer. Excuse me, very carbonated. I guess it's carbonated. It doesn't feel as carbonated. It's very sweet on the finish. It's not cloying, but it's it's definitely dessert-esque. Yeah, it is. Don't get me wrong. This is fucking a delicious, phenomenal top top tier beer. It's really good. And um but as I continue drinking on, there's things that are hitting me that kind of like, you know, get temper my expectations as I finish this glass. I'm going to drink the rest of this today, obviously, because it's in a can and there's no save in it. Um, but, man, this is a tale of two beers. One, the aroma in the first couple sips of this, fucking five out of five, world class, 100 out of 100, amazing beer. And then the last couple sips in the last three or four minutes, slow it down, Joe. That said, this is really good. 13.65%. I know it's boozy. I wouldn't guess over 12 if I was doing it blind. Um, the body not being, you know, super viscous would say, okay, this is more like, you know, 12% as opposed to almost 14. Um, but it does hide the alcohol well, all things considered, but it's definitely boozy. I can feel it. There's a big warm in my chest. Nothing on the palate, but like you could just tell it's bigger. 
My biggest issues with this beer are the body and mouthfeel, not fantastic. The barrels aren't as pronounced as I was hoping. And I think the vanilla might be a little bit too heavy handed. Um, and stopping this one from being super cohesive and balanced is a little bit, again, from midway through the palate to the finish, the vanilla kind of dominates. I'd like to see that vanilla kind of, you know, like 25% less of that vanilla in terms of intensity and the barrels kind of shine. And I think this would definitely make my top 23 beers of 23 uh, list without question. It's going to be on the edge of entering that discussion. Um, it's a damn tasty barrel aged imperial uh, coffee stout. That's another thing too. I'm not getting a lot of coffee, believe it or not. I, I guess I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I you know Speedway Stout's a coffee stout. Not getting a ton of coffee. There's a there's an underlying like roasted kind of malt character, maybe a little bit of coffee roast. But the star of the show here is 100% that rich, deep, you know, chocolate coming from the malts and then the vanilla. The barrel's getting lost. The coffee's getting lost a little bit. This is fucking delicious. Don't get me wrong. It's just when I start thinking about where do I rank this as far as like you know is this a five out of five, four out of five, whatever. There's things that are knocking it down, and you know you got to be honest. So, really delicious beer. Super happy he sent it my way, but um, it's not gonna. I don't think I, we'll we'll see at the end of the year what what I give my you know, in a week or two what I give this one. But um, barrel aged Speedway Stout, the Vietnamese coffee with vanilla edition. I am going to give this a high four point five out of five. I'm gonna go four point five five. Still a fucking fantastic beer, fantastic score. I just think that at the end of the day. Um, there's a couple flaws with this that are substantial and I'm probably going to drink the rest of this, but I'll tell you right now, like it's not cloying as we speak, but I think it's one of those beers where maybe the last three or four ounces, it'll be tough to put down. And, um, I love the flavors of this one. It's just, there's a couple things stopping it from being, you know, a world-class, amazing, uh, barrel aged Imperial coffee stout, uh, price point availability. I fucking no idea. Literally none. I'm not going to guess, uh, Sierra hotel sent it my way. So Sierra hotel, if you know, would you pay for it? If you know, post in the comment section or if anybody else out there got their hands on this one, what do you pay for this one? And then availability. All I know is with Al Smith, we used to see their stuff here in the Buffalo, New York area many years ago. And probably like three or four years ago, they just stopped destroying to my area. So we don't see their stuff. Uh, sometimes when I go down to Ohio and more specifically, like around in Cleveland, I'll see some, you know, a uh, variant here or there, maybe the base, but outside of that, I don't see it. So I need to pick up the base of this and, uh, you know, whatever variants I can and give them a go at some point. I do have one variant in the fridge that I picked up a couple years ago. I shouldn't say in the fridge, in my cellar, uh, but it's technically in the fridge. So kind of the seller. Um, might need to give that a review. That's from 2021. and has like vanilla and cinnamon and something else in it. We'll see. Probably, you know, not drinking in its prime, but I'll have to give it a go. So yeah, I'm really curious about uh, this one. So if anybody out there has really had this one, please post in the comment section. And let me know what you thought about it. We'll see if it makes the top 23 beers of 2023. Based on the last, you know, you know, five or six minutes of this review, probably not. But uh, I'm going to go and drink the rest of that, hopefully. And uh, enjoy every second of it. So regardless of what I thought about this beer, huge thanks to your hotel for it. Appreciate everybody stopping by for another a beer review here on the Beer Patrol to the next one. Cheers.